Welcome back to the Fop Doodle series of Darker and Darker, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Continuing on where we left off. The Basic Dungeon Survival Handbook. Okay. Part 1. Party up. It's dangerous to go alone. Improve your odds of survival by partying up with fellow adventurers. The game's more fun with friends. Did you know that if you click this button right here, if you click play, plus you can find people in your lobby of all different classes here at the top. We have 60,000 people online, 33,000 actually, lobby playing right now. If this doesn't suit you and you don't want to search one by one, you can go to the gathering hall in the top right. And then you search, which is a segue from my last video, you can find players. So I'm in West Coast. These are all players that will come that they want to uh, see what your group is. Okay, back to Fop Doodles. You're not the hero. Dungeon diving is a hazardous endeavor. Everything out of the, there can and will try to eat you. Over 90% of our internal testers die to the first monster of the map. Can you do better? Currently, we are here in Dungeon Basement L2. Difficulty is hard. The loot quality is poor to epic. And if you got on further, Basement Level 3, which is the red portal, Difficulty Hell loots rare to unique. Welcome to Dark and Darker. Number three, the Death Swarm. The dungeons below are protected by a powerful curse. The Death Swarm will try to consume your soul. Heed the minimap and avoid its oppressive clutch. So what you want to be aware of, of this red timer right here. That's how long the swarm is coming in. The swarm area is this red spot right here. You can't be in that. You can play in this area on the side and still be safe, but eventually you want to make your way towards the white safe zone inside the circle. Fun fact, if you need to path out of the zone, you can just have health pots and med kits ready so that as you take damage from the swarm, you can path your way through while healing and negating the damage. If you need to say go all the way around here, back down through this cross, and then cut across to here. Find a portal, very important. Let me move my camera for you guys. One second. Let's move it over here. Haha, -ha, now I'm over here. Number four, find a portal. Portals will appear during your journey below. If you are fortunate to find one, you can open them to escape with your loot, which is the blue one. Escape. It brings you back to the uh, tavern of the Espresso Depresso. You know what I'm talking about from the last playtest. If you pick the red dungeon, you and your party will go into the next level, level two, Inferno Dungeons. Tip. A portal closes as soon as someone passes through it. Sometimes it's better to let an enemy open a portal and sneak on by, leaving them to rot behind. As a rogue, I love doing that. I stealth up, they open it, and I run through. Or they're opening up their portal for their friends and you're going to try and steal it. Big brain chat. Collect loot. Profit. Number five. Once you escape with your riches, head over to the merchants, which is this tab up here. Merchants. And right now there's no rep, but I will explain those as we go. So merchants, and these are each guy specified for you fop doodlers. These guys will buy your old weapons, ill-fitting clothes, and even your smelly old boots. You know, no one wants to hold on to their smelly boots. This crazy guy likes shiny things, the treasurer. You're going to pick up treasure, he's going to give you gold, you're going to buy more stuff, and you go pew, pew, pew. Okay? And that, my friends, is the quick and dirty way of the fop doodler adventures. Let's go over some merchants. The surgeon, you can buy med kits for gold. Okay? Heals 10 HP for 5 gold. This one heals 15 HP for 15 gold. You can buy the same two in stacks of three. Okay? Woodsman gives you items for uh, different classes. The ranger, throwing axes for the fighter barbarian. Hunting traps, throwing knives for rogues and wizards. Pickaxe to get um, crafted gear. Longbow for the ranger and torches, which you can throw on pressure plates and light up illuminated areas in case you get spiked. The goblin merchant is a random RNG roll, random name generator, RNG, meaning you buy stuff with gold, 75 gold, 75, all 75, and it gives you a random stat for your class. Sometimes good, not always the best. Treasurer, you can get coin purses, so if you have a bunch of gold in your stash, this is 50 gold coins rather than having a bunch of gold just everywhere. You can bring it into the dungeon as well so that you guys see uh, less inventory space. You save inventory space. Uh, next up on the treasure, 
So you convert your silver coins that you get in game to gold right here. The collector, uh, he has nothing to buy, but what you're gonna sell is all the stuff in your stash. So if you have like a treasure thing, you're gonna sell that to your merchant collector. Valentine, last play test, we had candy canes. If you collect candy in your game, right here, heart candies, or you go to the merchant tab, the trade tab, and you go to mis miscellaneous trade, you're gonna see people are selling candy for gold. And you can get good gear with this, or ore for crafting. Okay. Each tab has a different uh, trader thing. So fighter, barbarian, rogue, rangers, hideout, wizards, cleric, utility, which is like uh, necklaces and rings. And then, yeah, miscellaneous is for the candy canes and uh, ore. That's the Valentine. So this guy, uh, what's the word? Cycles out loot every once in a while. And then when you have enough candy cane, you want to buy some gear. The tailor is cloth gear. And then you can use crafting gear, which takes the powder you see at the very bottom. 12 blue, 25 red. Same thing here. And it's going to be blue has three stats that are un unidentified perks. Red can cycle back between three and four. Like this guy has four, but this one has three. And it's going to cycle that this next cycle, this ruby silver vestments might have four perks. Be aware of that. You don't be wasting your stuff on three perks. Okay? Different gear, sometimes has green, blues. You can buy your stuff here. Leathersmith, same thing. Leather gear for the rogue and fighter. I'm sorry, rogue and ranger. And if you want to craft stuff, here you go. You do the same thing right here. How to get that powder and whatnot? Um, the alchemist right here. You go to services, makes powder. The weaponsmith under services makes ingots. Blue, purple. See? Armor, got plate gear, green. Mostly whites and greens. Alchemist gives you health pots that are limited quantity. And mage staff is staffs for uh, casters. So here's a green staff. Maybe you want to pick one up for your friend. Or you're a solo loner gamer who's got no friends and only plays rogue. On to the next guy. Tavern Master. Ale. Makes you drunk for 15 seconds but gives you 11 strength. Who would want to buy this, you say? Well, maybe you're a cleric friend is OP or you roll cleric and you, then your abilities go to class then spell, I'm sorry, perks and skills and then right here brewmaster, oh, sorry I'm going to move my camera once more zoop, over side other side, brewmaster you do not exhibit the detrimental drunk effects when you drink alcohol that is big, why? because you get damage but you're not drunk so you can put this one, where is it? perk, right here, and all of a sudden your brews that you buy from this guy when you buff up plus buffing on the cleric, you're just like swinging like crazy and everybody dies. And then you get fat loot. Weaponsmith. War Maul for the clerics. Pickaxes for, up. Oh, let me go back to the other side once more. Zoom. Pickaxes to the other, um, those are how you get ores. You mine this in the solo dungeons here under play. Goblin caves, you can spawn and get mining really easily. Or the Forgotten Castle, you have to run around and find ore. In the high rollers, 100 ante. Um, mining, you can get more than five, more than five ores per, uh, use. So if you mine it with friends, you can get up to five or even seven ores per round. Good to synergize with that. And classes that have faster action speed, rogues and rangers, you're going to want to prioritize because they're going to mine that faster. That is it for all the taverns and whatnot for you fop doodlers. Um, your stash things to be aware of. Instead of dragging over stuff from, say, your inventory here to your stash, if you look right here in the top left, alt, drag, divides items. What does that mean? Okay, alt, drag. You can drop stuff for your friends rather than the whole thing. Alt, drag, or alt, drag onto the floor for your friends. Alt, right click, sends one by one. What does that mean? Alt, right click. Okay, I just sent one of these to my inventory. Here, I'll put my camera over here again. Yo, yo, if you're watching this, drop a camera and say, choose a side because my camera's going back and forth, you know? Anyways, so if you wanted to bring one of these one by one, you would hold Alt, right click. Now I have one in my inventory. Do this. Okay, now I have two right here. Alt, right click. Goes in my inventory. If I want everything at once, what do I do? If I have a bunch of loot in here, I'm like, what do I do? How do I get it all out? You're going to hold right here. Shift plus right click. Boom, 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 boom. Everything's in your inventory really quickly. Okay. Um, these are your three 
inventory consumables. So for example, if I had a, let's go to my Ranger really quick, cancel this. If I go to my Ranger, 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 and I go to my stash. See, this hunting trap takes up four slots in my bags, but then this bandage only takes up one. So if I have a full inventory, rather than having my bandage in here, I would probably want to put my uh, hunting trap in other four slots because this only takes up one slot, but this saves me lots of space. So if you have a hunting trap, and then you got a pickaxe, like a pickaxe, and then you got a, a two-slot torch, and you got like a two-slot throwing axe, well, why don't you just put these all in your slots, depending on what class you play, so that you save yourself inventory space. We like loot. Inventory space. Right? So here's how the gold things work, right? Top right corner, I have gold as well. If I go to my merchants and treasure and I go gold coin, I buy one for five gold. It's in my bag. It's really good to bring these on high rollers because you loot gold, it saves you space. You put the bag in your uh, stash and you're going to shift, right click, and it goes right into your bag. Way easier. If I have gold in here, I put it back in my inventory here and then I shift right click it and it goes right into the bag. Bada bing. Uh, let's try this. I have 50 silver coins. How do I get rid of these? Well, if you watched earlier, you'll see it. But let's go over that really quick again. Merchants, treasurer, and then you convert gold coins. I'm sorry, silver into gold. So for me, there we go. All my silver just became gold. I have six left. So I can do these one by one. Three out of three. There we go. Stash. Okay. This bag right here has 14 gold. I put it in it. I'm going to have 24 gold. 24 plus 7. 31 gold. I'm rich. Cool. Uh, trading. You're going to want to become a trader. Next tab, I guess. We have merchants. Trading tab. If you want to trade stuff, you become a trader. How do you do that? Well, the Trade Guild membership. The guild accepts members of all classes, races, and alignments. Don't be a jerk in the trading post channel. No profanity, racist, and exclusionary language in the chat. No personal attacks on other traders. No NSFW content. If you don't know what that means, Google it. Your account will be banned from the playtest for breaking the rules. How much does it require to get you in? Well, you got to be level 5. You have to have initiation fee of 25 gold by playing some solo. It costs zero over time. And each trade, if you send it to your friends or someone else, it costs 15 gold. And this is when you're selling your blues, your purples, and your epics, the legendaries, to other players or you're giving loot to your friends before you drop into the mission. Okay? Gathering hall, that's for finding players. Customize, this is where you see your character, okay? Items will come later in game with cosmetics. cosmetics. Emotes, if you want to emote someone, you can toggle it. The, the keybind is T. T, 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 T. And then you will do this to people. And then you can be like, ah, surrender. Lobby actions. Um, you're just thinking really hard. How do you get this stuff? Well, you buy it in the cosmetic shop right here. Look at that. Defeated. Defeated because you spent points on this crappy emote. Cheers. Look at that. Cheersing because you spent 750 points on this amazing emote. Okay. Skewered feud, food, sorry, is um, 700. This just changes the cosmetic of your fireplace. Kind of cool if you're uh, RP. Cutthroat emote, you know, pointing finger. Remember, 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 for every finger that you point, three are pointing back at you. Something like that. Blue torch, up to you if you want cosmetics. It's actually pretty hard to see the game with this. So if you want to buy them for 1500, it's up to you. I have currently... Ready for this chat? Zoom. Other side. I have 2971. 2971 points. How do you get this? Adventure currency by killing monsters, discovering treasure, and using shrines and portals. Adventure currency is only banks when extracting from a dungeon. If you die in the dungeon, you lose all adventure currency earned in that section. Don't die. We need you to play the game. And then these are different cosmetics that changes your, the appearance of your character. So we actually know back to this side. I'm going to go Elf because I get plus one agility, minus one strength for male and female. You see the character over here? Male and female. Or if you want to go Skeleton, 
for 5,000 or 2,250, you get minus 10 armor rating, but then plus 10 magic resistance. That's really good if you're playing like Squishy or Cleric, where if you're being the tank, you don't take magic damage. You know? We like that. We like that. So I can buy the Elf Race right now if I want to go Rogue. Um, honestly, we're going to go Try Hard, so I might actually just go Elite Skeleton, because why not? You know? Why not? And then once you buy your stuff, you just go to Customize, and this is where you would equip each thing. Um, let's go over some UI stuff for Fop Doodles, okay? General settings. For all you FPS nerds out there like me, I play on 800 DPI, and I change my mouse sensitivity to 0.19. The default, I believe, is 0.25. I slow this down because when I'm aiming with my, uh, my Rogue or my Archer, I want to be a little bit more precise, okay? Streaming mode. Uh, I'm sorry, the lower the number, we'll backtrack. The lower the number, the slower you're going to move. The, the higher the number, the more zippy you're going to go. Streaming note, streaming mode on and off turns uh, all the players' names into like a barbarian hashtag like number or like rogue hashtag number number. So everything's like reset if you don't want to see profanity names. Audio, self-explanatory, total volume, 100%. Effect volume, 100%. Music volume, I kind of turn down so that I can hear more uh, cues. Background sound, I just leave on so I can hear the game. Voice chat, I turn that on. Voice chat channel. Um, if I'm not streaming, I keep it to proximity because it's fun to talk to people. If I'm in a group and I change it to party because I want my uh, in-game comms, unless I'm using Discord, to be voiced to my party only. Uh, up to you, push to talk, send mode. I keep mine on push to talk because I play in Discord, and when I want to talk to people in-game, I usually leave it on proximity. Or if I want to talk to people in Discord first and then talk to my other team in party, I can do push to talk, right? Video settings. I'm an FPS nerd. This is up to you. I keep everything on low. If you want to bump it up, bump everything up to medium and then go from there. If you have an oak, like awesome PC and there's no stuttering, by all means, play on Epic. The game looks great. Very fun. Rendering scale. I keep it 100%. Display mode. This is up to you. Personal preference. I get the most FPS on full screen and I play on 1920 by 1080. My max frame limit. If you're getting screen jitters and like uh, tearing, mess around with this number and set it to um, initially your monitor's refresh rate. So if I, ha I have a 240 hertz monitor, so I would maybe set mine at 240. And if that's still tearing, maybe I would try like 239. And if that's still tearing, I would go down in five, like 235 and go from there. Or if you have a 60 hertz, well, leave it on 60. If you have a 70 hertz monitor that exists, I don't even know, 70 hertz. I know 144 exists. So maybe you want to set yours at 144 and then hit apply, okay? I keep it on max because I just like max frame rates. Screen brightness. I turn this all the way up. I think the default is somewhere around like here or something like that. But have it all the way up so that you can see the game. Inputs. This is up to you. Uh, I buying crouch. I think default is C. I do left alt. A little bit easier for me. Um, you can also click it and do maybe like middle mouse button since it's kind of unused. It's up to you. But I like alt. Move forward, W, A, S, D, uh, walk, left shift, if you want to bind this something else. Left primary attack, secondary attack, depending on like your swings, if you hold left click, you're going to throw your right arm out. If you hold right click, you're going to swing your left arm. So maybe you want to switch these depending on your play style. Uh, R is to reload. You can bind Q and E to your skills. Maybe like you have a mouse such as this G Pro Wireless, and you're going to want to bind, oh, you're going to want to bind it to like your thumb buttons here, right here. One and two. Emote wheel is T, inventory is tab by default, voice on and off very fast is a comma. So maybe you're in a pinch and you want to silence everyone, use comma. Voice mode selection, this goes back and forth between proximity and party. So that is period on your keyboard. To talk in game, B, 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 B. F, you can change this, special interaction, F is to interact with doors, uh, disarm traps and whatnot. Quick slots, one, two, three, four. Those are your different um, items. So it'd be your first weapon slot, your second weapon slot, third might be your uh, pickaxe, and fourth is probably your other item. Uh, pro tip, you run faster if you put away your weapons or take off uh, gear because there's minus movement speed. Press X or bind that to something else. You will put away your weapons, 
and that will allow you to run faster and escape. And then spectator mode, left, right mouse to change who killed you, and then change perspective between first person and third person. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see if you see invites, you're going to allow party invites in the top right. Clicking this little icon right here, you'll see people invite you. If you want to be solo, you clear that off. If you want to be with people, click it on. Fame and karma system. This is where you upvote people. I want to shout out King Kyle. You're uh, my dual partner, lifelong friend. Let's go, buddy. You can upvote people right here. The karma system displays the trustworthiness of a player. Let me uh, actually put this now down here. Waha. The karma system displays the trustworthiness of a player based on the opinion of other adventurers. You can affect the karma of your past teammates by giving them praise or condemnation. You can only report on teammates for the previous six matches. Players with red names can re cannot report other players until they restore honor to their name. You currently have zero karma ports because I need to play one more portal, four out of five. If you don't have any karma ports, it will regenerate after five portals. Punishing a team killer does not use a karma report. So if I play with someone in my party, I would upvote them and be like, yo, you did great. Or I would downvote them and they did bad. So if someone f uh, accidentally killed me down here, you would want to forgive, praise is to upvote, down is to punish, or you would punish a team killer and basically their account would get like uh, hindered and their name would be red, which looks like this on the leaderboard. These guys right here, you don't want to be grouping up with them because they're going to kill you. Their name is red. Okay. Karma and fame. Player list. We went over this. Here's all your classes when you want to group up with people. Fop doodles only. That's the whole guy that we just went over. And we want to change your class. Bottom right. Change your class. And there you go. All right. That sums it up. I appreciate you guys watching my Dark and Darker Fop Doodles guide. Um, like and subscribe if you guys enjoy the content. Drop a comment and let me know what type of videos you'd like to see next in the Dark and Darker series. Have a great day. Take care.